Uh, a friend of ours is a, a Catholic person, and I was showing them the, uh, the Amadea diary, and she was looking through the list, she was saying prayer, okay, I agree with prayer, fasting, oh, I can see the mm -hmm. you know, logic in it. She got down to the list of predestination, yes. and that was the one that sort of stuck in her throat, saying, well, if it's predestination, what is the point of the above? You know, if everything's predestined, then, you know... Um, but what, what is predestination? She was, like, fate. Predestination, that's what yeah, she was What he at. understand of predestination? I suppose they, they were thinking that, you know, your life's pretty much mapped out. Ah, uh, but that has delivered me, and um, that's, that, that question has told me something which, of which I was not aware before. I thought you come regularly to our question answer sessions <laughs> and you also attend Juma, Juma and listen to my various sermons on various fundamental issues where this issue of destiny has been dealt with dealt with by me right. at such length in such depth that after that you are telling me that you couldn't answer him well i, I, I answer it's amazing <laughs> i try my best huh? i try my best but if you had tried your best it would it would have been impossible for you to feel uh, you know sort of defenseless in this mm. i assure you one thing the issue of predestination is what first be, must be decided. He is born in a certain circumstances, to a certain family, in a certain country, with some congenital advantages, some congenital disadvantages. Can he change anything of this? So this is, pre this is destiny. <laughs> That's his destiny. The rest is, is... One form of right. this. This is form of predestiny predestined things and there are certain things which are interrelated where destiny and human effort are intertwined. There too it is in the knowledge of God that in the final analysis somebody would shape, help his destiny to be destroyed and help his destiny to be you know um, to be good for him. And he, it is not his free knowledge which determines the issue of the outcome. It is his free choice which determines the issue of the final outcome. But because God has free knowledge of what is to come, so the knowledge of what he would do does not change. Because that knowledge is dependent on the action of somebody else. Now, this is the most difficult part which people fail to understand, which I have been trying to make them understand through many examples. But to me, it is the simplest case. There is no problem at all. Now, what you did this morning, do you know? Well, um, I remember what I did. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Do you tell me. Well, I got up, read huh? prayers, went back to bed, yes. had some breakfast. Yes, yes. Um, the teacher came round, played with my son, my brother-in-law yes, right. came round, uh, blah, blah, blah. Now, you know that. I remember that. Uh, can you change it? No. None of it. Is it because you know it, this is why they, it's in, unchangeable? Even if, I'd, even if I'd slept through and couldn't remember it, I, was still, still, it was still, I still couldn't change that's it. That's it. So the knowledge has nothing to do with unchangeability of your past. Your knowledge but your knowledge is in unchangeable as well because the facts are unchangeable. So what precedes the facts or the knowledge? The facts. So in relation to the future, God has the pre-knowledge exactly in the same relationship. He has the knowledge of a thing because it would happen like that. Otherwise he would not have that knowledge because that knowledge would be false if it hadn't happened like that. See? Yes. <laughs> this is predestiny. Yeah. I mean, one of the forms, there's so much more to it. No, I understand. Okay. Yeah? Thank you. Please.